Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Oni de Guzman and our topic for today is Illustrating Proportions for Grade 9, Quarter 3. If we will recall the definition of ratio, ratio is used to compare two or more quantities. And quantities involved in ratio are the same kind so that ratio does not make use of units. However, when the quantities are of different kinds, the comparison of the quantities that consider the units is called rate. Also, the equality of two ratios is called proportion. If the ratios a to b and c to d are equal, then we write a to b is equal to c to d or a over b is equal to c over d where b and d are non-zeros. So to illustrate proportion, so let us recall the methods in determining the proportionality. So let's have this example. Determine whether the ratios 9 over 15 is equal to 12 over 20 are in proportion. So again, so we will use the first method. So that is what we call cross product. So I will write 9 over 15 and 12 over 20. So I want to determine whether the product of 9 and 12 is the same as the product of 15 and 12. So I have here 9 times 20. Is it equal to 15 times 12? So I found out that 180 is equal to 180. So therefore, we call this one as proportion. So the second method is what we call simplifying ratio. So if I have 9 over 15 and the greatest common factor is 3, so divide both the numerator and denominator by 3, so I have 3 over 5. On the other hand, 12 over 20 has the greatest common factor of 4, so divide the numerator and the denominator by 4, so I have here 3 over 5 as well. So clearly, we can say that 3 over 5 is equal to 3 over 5. So therefore, we call this one as proportion. The next method that we will use is by product of means and extremes. So if I have 9 over 15 is equal to 12 over 20, I can rewrite this one as 9 of is to 15 or 9 over 15 or we can rewrite this one as 9 is to 15 in column form is equal to 12 is to 20. So tentatively, we will write this one as equal sign. So take note the numbers inside are what we call means. So we have 15 and 12 are means. On the other hand, the numbers outside, it means 9 and 20 are what we call extremes. So it is a proportion if the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So that is, is it 15 times 12 is the same as 9 times 20? So we have here 15 times 12 equals 180, while 9 times 20 is equal to 180. So clearly, so it is a proportion. Alright, since we've been able to illustrate proportion, so let's move on now to the fundamental rule of proportion. So if A is to B is equal to C is to D, then A over B is equal to C over D, provided that B is not equal to 0 and D is not equal to 0. So the first property that we will talk about is the cross product property. Meaning to say, if A over B is equal to C over D, then A times D is equal to B times C, where B is not equal to 0 and D is not equal to 0. The second property is reciprocal property. So, meaning to say, if A over B is equal to C over D, then B over A is equal to D over C, where A is not equal to 0 and C is not equal to 0. It means that we simply interchange the numerator and denominator for A, B as well as for C over D. Alright, so the third property is what we call alternation property. So, if A over B is equal to C over D, then we can have here A over C is equal to b over d wherein c is not equal to 0 and d is not equal to 0. Let's move on to the fourth property, meaning to say that is addition property. Again, 
if a over b is equal to c over b, then if we will add a plus b all over b is equal to c plus d all over d, wherein b is, is, is not equal to 0 and d is not equal to 0. So that is addition property. Next one is what we call subtraction property. So again, if c, uh, a over b is equal to c over d, then if I subtract a minus b all over a, that is equal to c over d all over d. Again, b is not equal to 0 and d is not equal to 0. Finally, we have the sum property. Meaning to say, if a over b is equal to c over d, then a over b is equal to c over d, which is the same also as simply add a plus c all over b plus d. That is equal to k, wherein b is not equal to 0 and d is not equal to 0, and k is what we call the constant of proportionality. Let's have our example number 1. Rewrite 5 over 12 is equal to 10 over 24 according to the property indicated in the table and find out if the ratios in the rewritten proportions are still equal. Again, so the first property is what we call cross product property, meaning to say 5 over 12 is equal to 10 over 24. So simply multiply 5 times 24 is it equal to Okay, 12 times 10. So clearly, 120 is equal to 120. So it is a proportion. So next one is reciprocal property. So again, I have, I'll simply interchange 5 and 12 as well as 10 and 24. So I have here 12 over 5 is equal to 24 over 10. So again, cross multiply. So 12 times 10 is it equal to 5 times 24. Clearly, 120 is equal to 120. Number three is alternation property. It means that I'll simply put 5 over 10 is equal to 12 over 24. Then use the cross product. So I have here 5 times 24 is equal to 10 times 12. So therefore, 120 is equal to 120. Thus, this is a proportion on to property number 4 is addition property. So we have 5 over 12 all over 12 is equal to 10 plus 24 is equal to 24. So this is the same as 17 over 12 is equal to 34 over 24. So again, using the cross product, 17 times 24 is it equal to 12 times 34. So 408 is equal to 408. The next property is subtraction property. So if I have here 5 minus 12 all over 12, is it equal to 10 minus 24 all over 24? So I can have here negative 7 over 12 is equal to negative 14 over 24. So using the cross product to verify whether this one is a proportion or not, so I have negative 7 times 24, is it equal to 12? times negative 14. So clearly, negative 168 is equal to negative 168. So therefore, it is a proportion. Finally, we will use the sum property. So we have 5 over 12 is equal to the constant of proportionality. So such that 10 over 24 is equal also as 5 over 12. Because if I'll reduce 10 over 24, this is the same as 5 over 12, so which is equal to your constant of proportionality. So 5 over 12 is equal to 10 over 24, which is the same also as 10 plus 5 all over 12 plus 24. So we have here 15 over 36. So if I'll divide both the numerator and denominator by 3, so I come up with 5 over 12. So clearly, when 5 over 12 is the constant of proportionality, so therefore we can say that, okay, 5 over 12 is equal to 10 over 24 as a proportion using the six properties of proportion. So let's continue. Given 4y over 5 is equal to 8y over 10 according to the property indicated in the table and find out if the ratios in the rewritten proportions are still equal. 
So again, so let's use the first property that is the cross product property, meaning to say 4y over 5 is it equal to 8y over 10. Again, so 4 times y is equal uh, times 10. Is it equal to 5 times 8y? So clearly, 40y is equal to 40y. On the other hand, if I'll use the reciprocal property, it means that I'll interchange 4y over 5 as well as 8y over 10. So I come up with 5 over 4y is it equal to 10 over 8y. So using the cross products, so I, ha I have 5 times 8y. Is it equal to 4y times 10? So therefore, 4y equals, uh, I mean 40y is still equal to 40y. Moving on to alternation property, meaning to say I have 5 over 10. Is it equal to 4y all over 8y? So I have 5 times 8y using the cross property is equal to 10 times 4y. So we have here 40y equals 40y. So clearly, it's still a proportion. Moving on to property number 4. So we have the addition property such that 4y plus 5 all over 5. Is it equal to 8y plus 10 all over 10? So again, using the cross product, so I have 4y plus 5 times 10. Is it equal to 5 times 8y plus 10? So using the distributed property, meaning to say 10 times 4y equals 40, then 10 times 5 equals 50. So we will do the same also. So 5 times 8y equals 40y, then 5 times 10 equals 50. Next one is what you call subtraction property. So again, so we have 4y minus 5 all over 5. Is it equal to 8y minus 10 divided by 10? So using the cross products, so 4y minus 5 times 10, is it equal to 5 times 8y plus or uh, minus 10? Okay, so we have 40y minus 50, okay, is it uh, equal to 40y minus 50? So clearly we can say that 40y minus 50 equals 40y, so it's still a proportion. And finally, we have the sum property, so we have 40 4y over 5 is your constant of proportionality. And 8y over 10 is the same as 4y over 5 because if I divide both the numerator and denominator by 2, so I come up with 4y over 5, still the value of k. So again, so we have 4y plus 8y all over 5 plus 10. So this is uh, simply add together the numerators all over the denominators. So that is still plus, okay, 4y plus 8y is equal to 12y, while 5 plus 10 equals 15. And take note that the greatest common factor between the numerator and denominator is 3, so I can factor out the 3. So again, so it will result to 4y all over 5. So again, when where 4y over 5 is the constant of proportionality, it means that we have still a proportion using the six properties of proportion given that 4y all over 5 is equal to 8y all over 10. Let's continue to problem number 3. Solve n in the proportion 2 is to 3 is equal to n minus 3 is to 12. So again, using the product of the means, meaning to say I'll multiply, okay, 3 okay, times n minus 3, okay, then product of the extremes, so we have 2 times 12, so simplifying further, so we, I have here 3n, okay, using the distributive property, minus 9 equals 24, then add both sides by 9, so I have here 3n is equal to 24 plus 9, so 3n equals 33, and divide both sides by 3, so n is equal to 11. Let us continue. So solve x in the proportion 2 over 5 is equal to x minus 5 all over x minus 2. So from this one, I can use the cross products. It means that I have 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 5 times x minus 5. So distribute 2. So I have 2 times x is equal to 2x and 2 times negative 2 is equal to minus 4. Then we have 5 times x is equal to 5x. 
and 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. Okay? Put together the variables uh, and constant together. So I have here 2x minus 5. So subtract both sides of the equation by 5x. Okay? Then add both sides of the equation by 4. So I have negative 25 plus 4. So take note that 2x minus okay, uh, 5x, it will result to negative 3x. While negative 25 plus 4 is equal to negative 21. Divide both sides by negative 3, okay, so x will result to 7. So that is the value of your x. So let's move on to problem number 5. Find the geometric mean between 4 and 16. So let's recall first the meaning of geometric mean. So the geometric mean between of two numbers A and B is the positive square root of their product. That is A over X is equal to X over B. Then, okay, X is equal to square root of A times B. So since we recall this definition, so we have A over X is equal to X all over B. So we're in A is equal to 4 and B is equal to 16. To substitute that one, so we have 4 all over X is equal to X times Oh, x over 16. Use the cross products. So I have here 4 times 16 is equal to x times x. But 4 times 16 is equal to 64 and x times x is equal to x squared. So I simply have here 64 is equal to x squared or x squared is equal to 64. Then take the square root of both sides. So I have x is equal to square root of 64 or x is equal to 8. So therefore, the geometric mean is equal to A. Okay, so that ends our topic on illustrating proportion. Again, this is Teacher Onan de Guzman. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos. Thank you.